In linguistics, mutual intelligibility is a relationship between languages or dialects in which speakers of different but related varieties can readily understand each other without intentional study or special effort. It is generally used as the most important criterion for distinguishing languages from dialects, although sociolinguistic factors are often also used. Intelligibility between languages can be asymmetric, with speakers of one understanding more of the other than speakers of the other understand of the first. When it is relatively symmetric, it is characterized as mutual. It exists in differing degrees among many related or geographically proximate languages of the world, often in the context of a dialect continuum. Intelligibility for individuals to achieve moderate proficiency or understanding in a language other than their first language typically requires considerable time and effort through study and or practical application. However, many groups of languages are partly mutually intelligible, that is, most speakers of one language find it relatively easy to achieve some degree of understanding in the related language, s. Often the languages are genetically related, and they are likely to be similar to each other in grammar vocabulary, pronunciation, or other features. Intelligibility among languages can vary between individuals or groups within a language population according to their knowledge of various registers and vocabulary in their own language, their exposure to additional related languages, their interest in or familiarity with other cultures, the domain of discussion, psychocognitive traits, the mode of language used, and other factors. Mutually intelligible languages or varieties of one language, there is no formal distinction between two distinct languages and two varieties of a single language, but linguists generally use mutual intelligibility as one of the primary factors in deciding between the two cases. Some linguists claim that mutual intelligibility is, ideally at least, the primary criterion separating languages from dialects. On the other hand, Speakers of closely related languages can often communicate with each other to a fair degree. Thus there are varying degrees of mutual intelligibility, and often other criteria are also used. As an example, in the case of a linear dialect chain that shades gradually between varieties, where speakers near the center can understand the varieties at both ends, but speakers at one end cannot understand the speakers at the other end, the entire chain is often considered a single language. If the central varieties then die out and only the varieties at both ends survive, they may then be reclassified as two languages, even though no actual language change has occurred. In addition, political and social conventions often override considerations of mutual intelligibility. For example, the varieties of Chinese are often considered a single language even though there is often no mutual intelligibility between geographically separated varieties. The same is true of Arabic. In contrast, there is often significant intelligibility between different Scandinavian languages, but as each of them has its own standard form, they are classified as separate languages. To deal with a conflict in cases such as Arabic, Chinese, and German, the term Dachsprache is sometimes seen. Arabic, Chinese, and German are languages in the sociolinguistic sense even though some speakers cannot understand each other without recourse to a standard or prestige form. Asymmetric intelligibility Asymmetric intelligibility refers to two languages that are considered partially mutually intelligible, but where one group of speakers has more difficulty understanding the other language than the other way around. There can be various reasons for this. If, for example, one language is related to another but has simplified its grammar, the speakers of the original language may understand the simplified language, but not vice versa. For example, Dutch speakers tend to find it easier to understand Afrikaans than vice versa as a result of Afrikaans' simplified grammar, although the large number of false friends between these languages can cause misunderstanding. However, Perhaps the most common reason for apparent asymmetric intelligibility is that speakers of one variety have more exposure to the other than vice versa. For example, speakers of Scottish English have frequent exposure to standard American English through movies and TV programs, whereas speakers of American English have little exposure to Scottish English. Hence, American English speakers often find it difficult understanding Scottish English or, especially, Scots 
whereas Scots tend to have few problems understanding standard American English. Similarly, Quebec French speakers are more easily able to understand standard metropolitan French than vice versa. Danish and Swedish normally have low mutual intelligibility, but Swedes in the Aresund region, across a strait from the Danish capital Copenhagen, understand Danish somewhat better. In some cases it is hard to distinguish between mutual intelligibility and a basic knowledge of other language. Many Belarusian and Ukrainian speakers have extensive knowledge of Russian and use it as a second language or lingua franca, or even as a first language in public or at work. Thus they can easily understand Russian, whereas speakers of Russian often can understand Ukrainian and Belarusian only partially. Similarly, in Germany and Italy, Standard German or Italian speakers have great difficulty understanding the dialects from regions other than their own, but virtually all dialect speakers learn the standard languages in school and from the media. Due to Danish rule, standardized written Norwegian was heavily influenced by Danish. Additionally, people in Norway are more used to listening to speeches of diverse dialectal backgrounds. As a consequence, Norwegian Bokma Yenal and Standard Danish are asymmetrically intelligible. Speakers of Norwegian can understand Danish better than vice versa. List of mutually intelligible languages, below is an incomplete list of fully and partially mutually intelligible languages. Written and spoken forms, Afrikaans, Dutch, Azerbaijani, Crimean Tatar, Gagors, Turkish and Urim, Belarusian, Russian and Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Macedonian, Serbo-Croatian, Crimean Tatar, Azerbaijani, Gagors and Turkish, Czech, Slovak, Polish, Danish, Norwegian and Swedish, Dari, Persian, Dutch, Afrikaans West Frisian, German, Estonian, Finnish, Finnish, Estonian, Karelian, Gagors, Azerbaijani, Crimean Tatar, Turkish and Urim, Galician, Spanish, Portuguese, German language. Dutch, Ilocano, Eastern Bontoc and Belangay, Irish, Scottish Gaelic, Kazakh, Kijis, Kinyarwanda, Kirundi, Kirundi, Kinyarwanda, Kijis, Kazakh, Macedonian, Bulgarian, Serbo Croatian, Norwegian, Danish and Swedish, Persian, Dari, Portuguese, Galician and Spanish, Romanian, Italian and Spanish, Russian, Belarusian and Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Rusine, Slovak, Czech, Polish, Slovenian, Serbo-Croatian, Spanish, Galician and Portuguese, Swedish, Danish and Norwegian, Tokelon, Tvan, Torlakian, Bulgarian, Macedonian and Serbo-Croatian, Turkish, Azerbaijani, Crimean Tatar, Gagors and Urim, Tvan, Tokelon, Ukrainian, Belarusian and Russian, Urim, Azerbaijani, Crimean Tatar, Gagors and Turkish, Zulu, Ndbel, Koza, and Swazi, spoken forms only, Dari, Tajik, German, Yiddish, Lao, Thai, Persian, Tajik, Polish, Ukrainian and Belarusian, Tajik, Persian and Dari, Thai, Lao, Yiddish, German, written forms only, Icelandic, Faroese, dialects or registers of one language sometimes considered separate languages, Hindustani, Hindi, Urdu or Euro The standard forms are separate registers of structurally the same language, with Hindi written in Devanagari and Urdu mainly in a Perso-Arabic script, Malay, Indonesian, Malaysian, Serbo-Croatian, Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, and Serbian Euro The standard forms are structurally the same language, and hence mutually intelligible, spoken and written. They are considered separate languages only for political reasons. Tagalog, Filipino Euro The national language of the Philippines, Filipino, is based almost entirely on the Luzon dialects of Tagalog, see also. References External links, Harold Schiffman, Linguist's Definition, Mutual Intelligibility. University of Pennsylvania.